If you want to know a little bit about singer-songwriter Ellie Holcomb's personal life, well, look no further than her latest creative project. She first made an impression in the national spotlight singing Americana heart songs with her husband as a part of his popular band, Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors. As she matured as a wife and a young mother, Ellie vulnerably shared her struggles and hopes through a catalog of solo songs that eventually awarded her a Dove Award for New Artist of the Year. And now, as Ellie welcomes her third child into the Holcomb fold, the musical mom also introduces her first ever children's book titled Who Sang the First Song and children's EP recording called Sing, Creation Song, exploring the very first song ever created while inspiring children and adults alike to discover their own heart song to share with the world. While still expecting her infant child, Ellie and I sat down to talk about all things family in this latest episode of CCM Magazine's Features on Film. I'm your host, Andrew Greer. So you're about to drop two new projects, but the thing I can only think about is you're about to drop a baby. A human. A <laughs> human. And being right. My, third. The third, yeah. My two other kids keep saying, Mom, when's he going to be on the outside? So... He'll be on the outside in four weeks. Do y'all have traditions of like how to speak to your, because your other kids are how old? I've got Emmylou's five uh, and then Huck just turned three. So what was like the process of explaining to him? All right. Oh, so fun. I mean, they, so Emmylou's been praying for like, she's just like, she wants us to have 12 children. Okay. I'm like, we're, no, <laughs> this we're is not, it. it's not going to be 12, babe. But she um, has been praying, praying, praying. So we, it was so fun telling them. We didn't tell them until we knew if it was a boy or a girl because she'd been praying for a sister. So we just wanted to be like, it is what it is. <laughs> right, you know? exactly, yeah. But had them open up a big, we told them we were giving them a present, but it was what the present meant that was like the mm. coolest present ever. Mm. And so they opened up a box, blue balloons, lollipop, because my son loves lollipops, okay. and then a little baby boy doll. Okay. And they were like, what does this mean? And Huck, our little two-year-old at the time, was like, a baby. <laughs> and literally, her eyes filled up with tears, and she goes, God, answer my prayers, Mom. Like, I mean, it was one of the sweetest. It was, it's was. it been so sweet. So, they, so I wake up in the mornings, <laughs> typically right now, with them coming in to my bed, and they bring dinosaurs and trucks, and they call him right now Brother Bear. And they're like, kick it, Brother Bear. <laughs> and they, they like laugh while, and it gives me 30 minutes extra of sleep. Yeah, morning. exactly. You're like, do it. I'm like, great. <laughs> just it's like the throw the toys yoga, on the belt. Goat yoga, but with kids, children and <laughs> trucks. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so these, these two new projects, they are designed for children, but based out of scripture. Like the words of these projects are inspired by scripture. Yeah. And what I... I think about it as like at, now that you are a mom of youngins, mm -hmm. has scripture, does scripture have a different role or does it participate in your life in a different way? Or what does scripture mean to you now from a mother's perspective? As a mama, yeah. I love that question. Yeah, uh, man, the Lord knows I need it. Because mm -hmm. there is so, I think for me, um, and even especially approaching scripture, thinking about kind of making it digestible for children. Mm -hmm. Um, the biggest thing for me is that I remember before I'm a mom, before I'm an adult with a job and responsibilities, relationally, work-wise, mm -hmm. before I am any of that, I am like first and foremost like a daughter of the Most High God. And so I think for me, um, as I communicate scripture to my kids, I think I'm continually reminded more than I've ever been before that like I'm his you kid. Are. I'm God, we're God's kids, mm -hmm. and He's crazy about us, even when we're acting like punks. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Which is, we do, and so do my kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a daily reminder of who you are to God. Broken people <laughs> raising broken people, baby. That's exactly right. I, I mean, this quote. I set out this quote that you've said about the book. I set out you speaking to write a book so that we could explore not so much how God made the world, but why He yeah. created the world. And each one of us and that goes like even what you're talking about now it kind of takes it from this i feel like in in my younger years with scripture and growing up in church it's an academic kind of research and sure. it's a discovery process through learning but what i hear you talking about here and with your children even now is that more experience experiential relational kind of scriptural portrait is that how i mean has god become more relational to you through the lives 
of your children? Oh, 100%. And I think, too, there's this sense of, like, um, I want to live out for them my relationship with Jesus. And and so that looks like me being broken in front of them a lot, honestly. Like, I'm like, Mm -hmm. didn't do that right. I need to ask for your forgiveness. God is so good, and he's so kind to forgive us and change us and help good things grow in our hearts. So I think more than anything, um, the way that I relate to God, it feels more like a story because mm-hmm. children love stories. Mm-hmm. And I guess we all love stories, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it never is. Um, and so I think there's a part of Scripture that has that feels like a story that I'm entering into all the time for myself, kind of afresh and anew, and then with, with them as well. And then I just got to talk about like Sally Lloyd-Jones mm-hmm. and the Jesus Storybook Bible. Every story whispers his name. We are in that book or her family devotional, which she doesn't call devotional because she, <laughs> her British act, she's like, what child would want to read a devotional? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. one, not one. It's a, great uh, point. it's a good point. So <laughs> thoughts to make your heart sing. Mm-hmm. We're in those mm-hmm. all the time. And uh, it has been a joy to kind of enter into the story of God's love for us, for myself. And then to invite my kids into that. It's been really fun. Who sang the first song, which is the book? Yeah. That's going out right. So, I mean, Sally Lowe Jones did the Jesus Story but Bible, but the perfect companion is who sang the first song. I know, right? I, man, yeah. I, that's like the nicest thing okay. anyone has ever said to me. But I did, she's so connected to this book because she talks about in, in the Jesus Storybook Bible and then in her family devotional thoughts to make your heart sing, mm-hmm. um, she says that God sang the world into being. And I just, I love, she said he sang the world into the being into being and set the whole universe dancing mm. and we were made to enter into this wonderful dance that centered around his love just like the universe centers is around mm-hmm. the sun and so i just i was like this is such a beautiful metaphor and one day emmy lou mm-hmm. my five well she was four at the time was like mom just in passing who sang the first song mm. and i was like that's a great sometimes yeah. the questions that your kids ask you're like oh just, <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Why? Why? There's uh-huh, just questions uh-huh. on questions on questions. But I that was one where it just a lot. Sometimes they'll make me slow down and kind of go, oh, man. And I'm like, well, so I did the classic parent thing where you don't exactly know the right answer. Sure. You're like, well, what do you think? Yeah, exactly. You know? Sit back and listen. Kid you not. I'm like, well, Emily Lou, who do you think sang the first song? She goes, I don't know. Dolly Parton. <laughs> You're I was like, like, yes. That's probably true. Um, I'm going to go do some yeah, research and yeah. get back to you. She'll on probably be around long after us. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So anyway, I got to call Sally. She's a friend of mine. And um, and we've partnered together uh, many different times. But um, just asked her, is that like, feel? is that just a beautiful like metaphor? Or is this like, yeah. a, like biblically grounded? And um, she sent me to a Tim Keller sermon where he talks about Genesis 1, and it blew my mind. And so I was like, okay. So then it just felt like uh, picking up breadcrumbs Mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. like, okay, here we go. Uh, So that it has been such a joy to kind of explore um, that question. And he's the one who shifts sort of the story of how to why Mm -hmm. in that sermon. And he just talks about Genesis 1 is actually written in the form of an archaic Hebrew poem. Mm -hmm. And he's like, why? Like, and then Genesis 2, people say they contradict each other. He's like, they don't, they do. They don't totally line up, but it's because one's an account and one's basically a song. Mm-hmm. And why would God <laughs> sing a song? Why would, why would he structure it that way? And what does God's song say? You know, and uh, it's, the song is, and you think about Genesis 1, and then there's morning, and then there's evening. Mm-hmm. There's a cadence, and then there's morning, mm-hmm. and God said it was good. Then there's morning and then there's evening. And so this whole idea that God's song says, you're good, but we know that we're not good. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, so where else do you see in the beginning? And he brings us to John chapter one. In the beginning, there was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. So Jesus comes and restores us so we can sing the song that we were born to sing, that we are good, that we're loved, and that God is good, and that his love for us is extravagant. That original virtue, you know, that we were made good yeah. something's gone awry but we were made good and and i think you know like i would think especially as a parent but i think all of us in general when we if we are disciples of jesus and we uh are looking at our children and we're thinking i want them so badly to know jesus but what i love about all that you're expressing and those thoughts from keller's 
thoughts. It's his action towards us, right? So you can want all day long for someone, but Jesus loves them whether, you know what I mean? Like the action is, it just alleviates us from so much Jesus complex responsibility. Totally. I feel like. Totally. He is we love because he first loved us. Right, right, it started right. with him. Right. And you're like going, and just even that sense of like a father, you know, mm-hmm. it's like these are, Cellular Joe says it like when God looked at Adam and Eve, he was like, you look like me. You look mm-hmm. like me, like you're, mm-hmm. and you're good, you know? And so I just, that every single human on the face of the earth is made in the image of God and that anything good in us originates with him, you know? And yeah. so... And we jack it all up, which sure. is why he said Jesus, yeah, yeah. and he knew that we yeah. would. And so, um, it is such a it's such a joy uh, to be able to. It's been such a joy to have those conversations with my kids as, I, as I've been kind of entering into writing this mm-hmm. book and then the, the music with it too. To be able to have those conversations with them has been such a joy. And then to know, I think all of us want to know you know, why are we here? Mm-hmm. Like, why did God make the world? Why did he, what's my purpose here? What am I living for? And that we are made to like sing with all, with our life, with our voices, but also with like our lives and mm-hmm. all the different gifts, the ways he's gifted each different person. What does that look like to sing God's mm-hmm. beauty and God's love and his creativity with our lives? Sure. That is such a fun yeah. conversation to me. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. there's well, so many different ways. And for ways. him to be singing through us, it changes how we interact with one another, right? Yes. It takes elements of control away. And it provides grace. It provides spaces for love that um, it can be difficult in our society and culture today. I mean, it, what this is doing, it's, it's reminding children from their very first steps, this is who you are. And if we do relax into who we are, I think as adults, when I relax into who I am, who God says I am, then um, I see others for who they are. Totally. You know? You're like, and that, oh. <laughs> and that, really I mean, that could change, that changes a world. You know, it really yeah. does. It changes our hearts with one another. Uh, I think about, you know, scripture can be this thing, you know, whenever we say scripture or the Bible, especially in our culture today, uh, even among Christians, because it's been used, um, in legalism and kind of the teetotaler stances for so long to an end that maybe not how it was originally intended, Mm -hmm. uh, we can tend to shy away from it. Did you feel any of that caution? You know, we're same generation. So you feel any of that caution when you use scripture to be like, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or I don't want someone who was beat over the head with the Bible to, did you feel like um, a responsibility to help welcome them in? Oh, I feel that weight all the, all the time. And I think, I think that is where, um, looking at the person of Jesus is really helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, and then having scripture in the context of knowing that it really is telling one big story. And so I think there's always, for, for me, the check is, is this pointing back to the story of God's love for us? Is this pointing back, uh, to, to the story that he invites all of us to be a part of building, that a kingdom is coming, that suffering doesn't have the final word. Um, and so I, I think about that a ton, mm. a ton. And, and I try to just go back to, is it telling a good story, mm. the good story that we were all made to be a part of? You know, music, I don't know, this is mm. a little bit off from that, mm. but it's part of why I love music so much, mm. and it's part of why I love writing scripture into music is I heard this guy named Dr. Jeremy Begbie. Okay. He te- he's an incredible, he's a pianist, and then he's also a professor of art and theology at okay. Cambridge, and I think maybe Duke. I could, wow. Dr. Begbie, if you were listening, and that is not where you work, I'm so sorry. <laughs> He'll probably um, take both of those, Let's though. Google that later. Sure do. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, sure, yeah, that's actually not bad. But he talks about how music is structured. Um, you start in a key, your home, and then the music moves away from home, hmm. And then it goes back to home. So he would play something as simple as Mary had a little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as. And you're like, (laughs) snow. And snow (laughs) is back home. He says there's something in music that physically connects to the story that's written into every single one Mm -hmm. of our hearts, that we were home with God originally. 
and that currently we're away from home and that one day he'll bring us back home again. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to have any words in music for it to connect to the, de the design mm -hmm. of our heart that was made to long for home. And so I love combining God's word with that sort of Mm -hmm. kind of mystery it feels kind of like crazy to me but there is yeah. there's something in you when you hear that that you're like on the edge of your seat you're like yes take me home <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i know completion it's yeah. like a it's this whole thing and music like you said music is an imitational medium yeah. it, uh, it kind of volunteers a space that we can all coexist in mm -hmm. even in all our humanity that's our humanity naturally divides, but I believe God is naturally uh, uniting us because He has created us in His image. Yeah. Music, I believe, is a reflection of that. Yeah, and, uh, so it's a sweet thing. I just love yeah. that question, like being careful with Scripture. Mm -hmm. I want it to feel always like an invitation and like a story rather than like a... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'll say in song and co-writes all the time, I'm like, this feels too luxury. Yes. This is yeah, too yeah, luxury. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes if I'm going to lecture, I try to then point it to myself. Sure. Because usually sure. I need to hear sure. it mm -hmm. too. Um, actually, always. Yeah. I need to hear what's true because I have amnesia. We have spiritual amnesia. Yes. And our work as believers is to remember. And mm -hmm. so I love my job because I'm always like, okay, sing it again. Say it again. <laughs> Tell me one more time. Mm-hmm. So who sang the first song? Dolly Parton. Parton. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. See the birds that are singing in the spring air. They're giving everything they need. They don't worry where their next meal will come from. They don't worry about a thing. So just look around you. Try to listen to the song creation sings And don't you worry cause you're in the hands of the God who made everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see the flowers in their colorful beauty They're dressed better than a king they don't worry about what they should wear, no. They don't worry about a thing. So just look around you and try to listen to the song creation sings. And don't you worry cause you're in the hands of the God who made everything. Because you're, you're not a bird and you're, you're not a flower. Petals or wings, but there is good news. You're worth so much more to the God who made everything. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 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 Mm -hmm. So when you worry about the day. And the storms that they might bring Try to remember that you're in the hands of the God Who made every single thing Now just remember You're not a bird and you're not a flower You don't have petals or wings There's good news because you're worth so much more to the God who made.